Happy Tuesday, Tabernacle Youth Family and Friends. It's Mr. Paul Matullis. I'm super glad and excited to come here and share with you for another Bible study. The first Bible study of 2022. Here we are on fourth day. It's January 4th, 2022. And how great, mighty, and kind God is that he has allowed us to see this opportunity. Oh, excuse me. I um, hope and pray that you all have had a blessed New Year celebration. I know that um, with the uh, rise in cases of the Omicron variant, that uh, some of you may be starting virtually or remote uh, for this next iteration of school, getting ready to start school back up again, and some of you are starting remotely. There's a slightly delayed start. So, prayerfully and hopefully, all is well with you and your family. Hopefully, you have some time to rest and rejuvenate during this winter break and and now you're ready and strengthened to finish off this academic year i am so very proud of all of you all and all the great and wonderful things that you are doing know that i am praying with you all continuously now not, not only just the youth of tabernacle but i'm praying for their parents guardians and families as well um, as you continue to student shepherd and lead the lives of our youth um, again uh, i have tagged here uh, the tab youth facebook page um, group so that uh, for those who are members of tabernacle or their um, their youth who are not connected to that facebook page that you can get connected with that facebook page uh, that's where we put not only the the um the sessions, the, the notes for, for that we use for, that I use in these Bible studies, but then also any other announcements pertaining to Tab Youth. As well, please uh, remain prayerful. We are hoping to um, endeavor, endeavor to do some things this year with the Tabernacle Youth Ministry. So please pray with and for me as um, I see God's guidance on how best to move forward and how best to lead the youth ministry here at the Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church. I also just want to give uh, praise, thanks, and honor not only to God, but then also to Pastor Manaway for this opportunity to share in these ways, these virtual messages messages um, and Bible study for the youth of Tabernacle. As I've always stated, as I stated last year, uh, Tab Youth, and I want to re restate that this year, uh, that if you have friends who are, especially those who are unchurched, uh, but friends who um, you're connected with, and it's like, hey, um, every Tuesday at six o'clock, uh, we have a virtual Bible study that's focused for youth and it's youth focused. And if you want to hop in and join in with us, you know, talk with your parents or they go to another church, talk to your youth pastor or your pastor of that church to see if it's okay for you to watch it with me. Um, and we, we are always glad to have those, have you all join us in these moments and opportunities to share of the goodness of the Lord and just digging in deeper into his word. Um, I think those are all the things I had, <laughs> announcements I had to think about and make. Just also reminders, have you to please look out. Um, we're planning on hosting a Zoom check-in listening session soon this month. Is my prayer is to host it this month where we get to check in with you all. But then also hear from you all. You know what? And in, in not just not just as it relates to. Um, the youth choir and serving as such as again, but what other uh, parts of ministry that you want to serve in? For those who are members of Tabernacle, uh, adults uh, or um, who are members of Tabernacle, who um, we're going to have not only for parents and guardians, but also potential volunteers, we're going to have a meeting as well so that we can hear the heart of our parents and guardians as it relates to um, what can we do as the Tabernacle Youth Ministry, but then also. Excuse me. What can we do as a Tabernacle Youth Ministry? But then also um, for those who are interested in serving and having a role in supporting the work of the ministry for for Tab Youth, um, that we can make space and begin to discover what those things are. All right, let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, uh, that's more time than I wanted to spend on that. But I just wanted to make sure that I covered that and greeted you. It's a new year, 2022, and I'm so excited to start it off with you all in these times and in this moment. So let's have a word of prayer and let's hop into our Bible study for today. And I'll talk about where we're going for the rest of the month. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, love you, honor you, and praise you just for another day, another chance, another opportunity. Oh God, thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Thank you, oh God, for the ways that you've kept, led, guided, and protected us. Thank you, oh God, for letting us, letting us see another month. 
uh, another, another month, another day, another year, God. We are here on the fourth day of January in 2022. And God, we say thank you and how great and mighty you are. Thank you, oh God, for your loving kindness and tender mercies. We love you, we honor you, we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Also, just want to make that announcement. Uh, 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 I'm here in the sanctuary, the, well, in the building, uh, pastor's recording, pastoral Bible study in the sanctuary. And I'm in conference room number three. You may hear a buzzing sound in the background. That is the heater um, in conference room number three. So, uh, so if you hear that buzzing sound, know that that's, that's what that is. So this month, uh, the month of January, I thought it would be uh, for tap for our youth for our Bible studies. I thought it would be important for us to go back to square one and talking about the mission statement of the youth ministry of Tabernacle Mission Baptist Church, uh, because this mission mission <laughs> statement is what's going to be guiding our work and how we and how we engage with each other and what we do through the youth ministry at the Tabernacle Mission Baptist Church. It's been some time since we've engaged in this. The last, uh, uh, is, I think it's been over about a year or so, uh, Pastor Manaway did some directed Bible studies uh, on our mission statement. Um, and if you look in the Tab Youth Facebook group page, those Bible study postings are still there. Um, but it's been some time since we engaged intentionally with our mission statement and with the script and with the focus scripture. So we're going to do that today. And then over the next three weeks, we're going to break down and, and explain and talk about each of the different um, parts and components of our mission statement. Uh, I know I mentioned last year and through throughout um, our conversations in Bible study that, you know, going back to our mission statement, gave the mission statement scripture and, and read the mission statement. But again, as we get ready to go into 2022 and as we get ready to focus in on what we're trying to do here at the Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church through our youth ministry, I thought it was important that we start off the year with intentionally engaging and reviewing the mission statement of the Tabernacle Mission Baptist Church. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, as a reminder, so our the mission statement of the Tabernacle is me, Miss Danella. We had a brainstorming session about I want to say about two years ago or so with Pastor Manaway, um, and came up with this um, wonderfully God-inspired uh, mission statement. And the mission statement reads. It is our mission statement, what we endeavor and hope to do through the Tabernacle Mission Baptist Church through our youth ministry, is to ensure that our youth and to help our youth know Christ, grow in Christ, and experience Christ. Again, that's our aim, our goal and vision here, what I hope to do, um, and those who, uh, who will, uh, in, in, those who will join me in serving as um, as volunteers and supporters of the youth ministry here is that we hope to help you know who Christ is, help you grow in Christ and help you in an authentic way to you experience Christ. Um, so I can't wait to talk about that experience part because again, like I said, authentic to you. I know what, how I experience him and, and what it means for me, but I want to make sure that for you, that you figure out a way that, that we can talk about how we can make sure that you are authentically engaging and experiencing Christ for yourself. Our scripture uh, that we'll engage in this morning, this, <laughs> this morning, it's morning, it's Sunday morning when, uh, um, uh, when I'm recording this, so if I say morning, please excuse me. Uh, but this evening, <laughs> our scripture for this evening is our, is our scripture that goes along with our mission statement, which is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, and it's the New International Version of that scripture that I'll be reading. Again, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. And it says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. So let's read that again. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example 
for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. So let's talk about this. So background of the scripture. Remember, <laughs> remember we spent the, the latter part, uh, the major portion from the last, uh, I want to say six months of the year, from August, uh, August through December, talking about um, inductive Bible study. So, you know, uh, everything that we're talking about, what I'm going through, we're going to we're going to make sure that we strengthen ourselves in these matters and methods. And remember, when we're talking about inductive Bible study, that we talked about getting the context of the scripture and what it is. And again, remember that not not every scripture stands on stands on its own. Verses don't stand on their own. Verses are a part of chapters, which are a part of books of the Bibles. And so, um, so we have Paul. The Apostle Paul, the um, one who has written over half of the New Testament. Remember, we talked about that breakdown um, when we started engaging in doing an inductive Bible study. And, and that Paul, who's wrote 13 out of 27, excuse me, books that we see in the New Testament, he is now writing this letter to his son in the ministry, uh, Timothy. And Timothy is a young man, and he is uh, starting to pastor this church. And so this letter, the first Timothy and second Timothy, are these pastoral epistles. Remember we said epistles are letters. Are these pastoral letters that Paul, who is this, uh, if you want to call it, uh, Paul, who is, let's use it in this way. Pastor Manaway is my pastor. And um, we engage and he, on, on a weekly basis, almost really, uh, uh, and, and speak daily about not only just life in general, but ministry stuff as well. So imagine this is a, you know, if the Lord calls me to a church, imagine this as a letter that pastor would write to me to say, hey, this is how to manage and handle the affairs of the church. And then not only that, but this is what you need to do in order the the uh, the attributes that you need to have in order to be a strong pastor. So it's 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 in that same way that that Paul is writing to Timothy. Paul's this experienced uh, shepherd pastor who's writing to this young um, new shepherd pastor Timothy, and is giving him some instructions on not only how to conduct and, and lead the church in the congregation, uh, but also other personal affairs of his life. And he gets to this fourth chapter of this first, le of, of, of this first letter that he writes, and this 12th verse, and he says, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. So, automatically we we assume that they're going to be older members of this church there are going to be people in this church who are older than timothy um not maybe not only older in age but older in christ they may they may have been in christ longer than timothy has been in christ they may have been at this church longer than timothy has been at this church um, so there are a number of different dynamics when you break down the word age that when you look at this that you can go with but he says paul says to timothy don't let anyone look down on you because you're young and that, and, and when we were praying about what scripture to come to, to that would help to highlight and bring this up to you, um, to help fo focus and center in our our work as 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 the youth ministry, we wanted to help help center and recognize that just because you all are the young people in the congregation, does not mean and should not mean that we treat you a certain way, that we look down on you a certain way, that we, um, what's, the, what's the word I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, um, and that we invalidate your experience as a young Christian. That be, just because you're a young Christian doesn't mean that there's nothing valuable that you can bring, which is the complete and total opposite of the truth. 
As a matter of fact, in where you are at your age and place and time, you are some of the perfect opportunity you are the perfect witness the per you have the perfect chance to serve as a representation of what God is and what God can do through people through young people and you are much more tapped in and much more innovative with a lot of the things that are going on in the world and so just because you're young does not mean that we ought to look down on you and invalidate your experience as a young Christian. And so it is amazing to me the power that you all have as youth, that you all have as middle schoolers, middle school and high schoolers, and the impact for the kingdom, for God's business that you can have, for the impact for God's business that you can do. Do you realize that you are um, perfectly primed, shaped and molded at the perfect opportunity to be used by God to have a great impact? How so, Minister Paul? You spend Monday through Friday about eight hours a day with a whole bunch of other people. <laughs> some of them your friends, some of them you know, some of them you don't know. Uh, some of the, so, you know, you, you, some of you have between 46 classes a day with about uh, 25 to 30 other people, including your teachers in that class. And then you go to lunch and then some of you all are involved in after school extracurricular activities. So some of you all are in basketball or sports or cheerleading or some of you all also work. So take that context that out of out of your school context out of your extracurricular context and some of you also work so look at all the areas of where you can have an impact for god's kingdom remember that god has called us from sin satan and the world not only for ourselves not only because he loves us but because remember that our job and we get this from Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, where he says, Go ye therefore, teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So we have, you have this opportunity to share the gospel. And as Paul tells to Timothy, to be an example to other people, not only believers, but non-believers as well. I talked about this last week when we were discussing, um, when we were discussing hope, uh, we were discussing Advent and what, what Jesus brings to us in the Christmas season and what we wait in, hope, hope, in anticipation for and how not only he brings hope, how not only he brings peace. Uh, that's where we left off the first week, but in the third week, uh, we talked about joy, how he brings joy and brings love, right? So remember how when I was talking about that, how you can be an example, you can be God's arms, God's hands, God's feet, when you go to school and be in a representation of God's hope, peace, joy, and love. And so that's what Paul tells to Timothy and what we tell to you today. That um, we are all prone to mis have mistakes. We are all prone to trip up, to fail. But, but remember, there are, again, older members of this congregation, and, and especially in your young age, oh my God, if I can just recount how many mistakes I've made when I was your age. But he says, don't let that trip you up. You're going to make mistakes, especially as a young Christian. You're going to make mistakes. Same thing as an older Christian, 30 years old, I'm going to make mistakes. But he says, don't let your age be a reason for other people to discount who you discount who you are, your witness 
and your testimony. Isn't that amazing how at your age in middle school, at 11 years old and 12 and from 11 to 18, how you can be a witness, a strong witness, an example of a believer to other believers who are at your school. I know a lot of you all go to school with other people who profess and claim to be Christian. So imagine the example that you can set for other youth who are believers. You say, man, why, why do you act like that? Why do you handle your way like that? And, 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 and engage with other people like that. And then you have this opportunity to share with other people. Your friends, well, you know, God has called us. You, this, is, this is a way that you can hold, we're supposed to hold each other accountable. But scripture says, iron sharpens iron. So this is where we can say, God has called us from living a life of, of, from ourselves to him. And hey, my brother, hey, my sister, you're not doing it. Let's talk about how we can do that, how we can grow together. But then also, Paul, in speaking to Timothy, shares with Timothy, hey, Timothy, just because you're young and you're going to make some young mistakes, especially as this young new pastor, you're going to make some mistakes. But don't get caught up in that. Don't let that be a stumbling block for yourself. But. Even in your youth, set an example for some of the older members of the congregation. Do you know the power that you can have as youth who are living lives to God? Who are, who are, who are an example? And here, and he gives us, Paul gives us some, some very very specific things that we can be an example of in our speech. Be an example by what you say, by the, by the words that you say. Remember, people can, can not only tell that you're a Christian if you have a cross hanging and dangling from your neck, but that by what you say, by how you handle yourself, by how you handle situations when you get frustrated. And I know you get frustrated. I get frustrated. We all get frustrated. But when you get frustrated, when people say or do something against you that is malicious and is wrong, like when one of your friends say something or something like that, how then are you representing Christ in what you say? But he says, don't only be an example, again, not only to other youth, but to the other to, to other adults as well, to other believers. Don't only be an example by what you say, but also be an example by what you do. Remember that God has called us to live a life to him. Excuse me, I got to put this here back a little bit. But that God has called us to live a life not only to ourselves, but unto him. So if we're living a life unto God, if we're living a life in a rep as a representation of God, that we, me and you, need to watch what we do. Remember I said, I know you've heard it. I know your parents probably said it, your grandparents or so, some of your guardians probably said it, have, have said it. That you may be the only Bible that someone sees. And that we need to live a life a way that God has called us to live. And not only what we say, but what we do. So God has not only called us to set an example for believers in our speech, what we say, in our conduct, and what we do. But in our attitude. God has called us to live a life again and just because you are young and this is the point that Paul wanted to express and get out to Timothy just because you are young does not mean that you cannot be an example to other believers 
and non-believers about what it means to live a life, a Christian lifestyle. And you can be, have fun and be a Christian. You can be young, you can be a young Christian your age and have fun and enjoy life. God, remember God has called us to live a life and live a life more abundantly. And in that abundant life, we have access to all these great and wonderful things. But God wants us to be an example, not only what we say, not only what we do, not only in our attitude, but in love as well. Remember, God is love. And remember, we talked about this last week, that when Christ came, Christ is the embodiment of God's love. Remember John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he did what? Gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So we need to be a representation of God's love. We need to have a giving spirit. Probably next month. Next month, um, I'm going to spend much more time. We're going we're gonna to spend much more time um, in, in this and talking more about uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Because um, I'm spending the next four more minutes. I'm speaking about some other things. But I want to talk more in depthly. I want to break, break these down again in speech and conduct and love. Then he says, in faith, that you can be, as a young Christian, an example of what it means to be faithful to God. Isn't that amazing? The example that you can set not only for older believers, older persons who are older in Christ, older in age, but your fellow friends, people who your peers, people who are the same age as you. Excuse me. How you can set an example and show and be what, uh, what it means to live a faithful life, what it means to be faithful to God, what it means to have faith. What it means to endure in faith. And then lastly, in purity. Um, I'll just say it like this. We can and we should not be doing everything that our friends do. God has literally called us from a life of sin, shame, Satan, and the world to live a life that is circumspect to live a life that is in regards to our, it's, it's called holiness and, and righteousness. To live a holy and righteous life. To live a life, to mimic. Remember, each day we're supposed to be growing in and getting more and more like Christ. And remember, Christ was sinless. Now, while we're in this flesh, we're never going to be sinless. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to sin. We're going to have mistakes. We're going to have uh, hiccups. But just because we have them does not mean we should intentionally, that's that word, engaging in uh, behaviors and actions that we know that we shouldn't be doing, that we know that God has called us not to do. So um, I'm going to stop right there. I, I want to engage with that much more. We're going to talk much more about that next month in February. Next three weeks, we're going to talk about knowing Christ. What does it mean to know Christ? Next week, we're going to talk about what does it mean to grow in Christ. And the week, uh, sorry, next week, know Christ. Week after that, grow in Christ. And the week after that, experience Christ. So that's what we're going to talk about um, for the rest of this month. Again, we're going to extrapolate. We're going to describe and talk about what does it mean to know Christ. We're going to talk about a scripture that talks about that. We're going to talk about a scripture that talks about growing in Christ. And then we're going to talk about a scripture that talks about experiencing Christ. And so, um, and then in the month of February, we're going to come back to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, and explain that and talk about that much more. Hopefully and prayerfully, I'm excited for this year and what the Lord has for us and where he will take us. 
with this year's Bible study and growing. Um, as uh, Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, growing in grace, 17 through 18, growing in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so I'm excited to grow together with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the youth of Tabernacle and their families, their friends. And God, thank you for our youth ministry mission statement and, the, and what you've purposed us in our heart. And thank you for this letter that Paul has written to young Timothy and this scripture, this verse to help us remember that just because we are young does not mean that we cannot be an example to other believers of how to live a life um, called to you. And so, God, we ask that you help us, help us not only to um, envision and be an example of the scripture to other believers, both young and old, but God help us to envision and move and, and, and participate in this Bible, in, in this world, in this youth ministry at the Tabernacle Baptist Church and help us be able to um, make this uh, mission statement practical. We thank you, we love you, we honor you. In Jesus name I pray, amen. All right, I pray and hope that you have a blessed day. I will catch you all next week for our Bible study.